Well, hi there. So in this video, we're going to be doing some practice with how many workers should I hire? And what's the deal you do with all that marginal revenue product and all that good stuff? So let's get started. Okay, so the first problem says, and it's all one problem, um, Wang's Wonderful Widget Factory, a firm that produces widgets. After which of Wang's Wonderful Widget Factory workers, boy, that's a mouthful, does diminishing marginal returns begin explained with numbers? Um, so what we do need is marginal product over here. This is a throwback, right? This is a unit three question. What? Um, so we have marginal product of six, then we have seven, boy, I had a brain fart there. Seven plus one is eight. 9, 10, 7, uh oh, diminishing marginal returns, uh, 3 and 1. So it begin. which one does it say? After which, after which, so it is after, after the fifth, because, uh, let's see, quantity of labor, I had to think about it for a second, quantity of labor 5, marginal product of 10 is bigger than, um, quantity of labor for marginal product of nine and quantity of labor six marginal product decreases to seven units or seven widgets technically. So uh, this is a little bit of a convoluted way of kind of explaining this. It's really just saying that 10 the fifth worker is the last one before the numbers start getting smaller again. So the first part of my statement here is actually saying that the one before that had a lower value. And then the one after that also had a lower value. So this is the last worker before which um, diminishing marginal returns begins. That's really all it says. Uh, assume Wang's sells widgets in a perfectly embedded market at the price of six. Calculate the MRP of the third worker. So remember, MRP is equal to the price times the marginal product. And we are given a price of six. And what's the marginal product of the third worker is eight. So that is 48. Wang's hires workers in a perfectly competitive labor market at a wage rate of $35 an hour and the market price widgets remain six. How many workers will they hire? So we know they're going to hire this guy. Uh, we're going to hire, let's see, what do we got? That was the third worker and the wage is 35. So let's do, we know that they're going to hire this guy. We know they're going to hire set. Let's just do a column here. MRP. Um, 10 times six is 60. Seven times six is 42. Three times six is 18. So they're definitely going to hire the sixth worker, um, but they will not hire the third worker. So we would say quantity of labor six because the marginal revenue product, and what was the marginal revenue? 42 is greater than or equal to the marginal factor cost of 35 and not... Q7 because the marginal revenue product 18 is less than the marginal factor cost 35. So we're enough to say here why, because these are not equal values, right? We want them to be equal, but they're not. And so we wouldn't go ahead and hire the seventh worker because their marginal revenue product is only $18. Now I'll assume that Wang's employing the cost minimizing combination of inputs. The marginal product of labor is seven. Wage rate remains 35. Marginal product is 60. What's the hourly rental price? So this is telling us that they are doing cost minimizing. So the marginal product of labor divided by the wage is equal to the marginal product of the machines divided by the rent. And it's actually just asking us for what's that value for the rent. So if I know that the marginal product of labor was seven and we paid them 35, that that must be equal to, um, what's this, 60 over something. And so this is saying one fifth is equal to 60 over X and, or just R, so R, must be equal to five times six is 300. So I have to be paying $300 for a machine. Um, then we've got, now assume Wang's wonderful widget factory workers form a labor union to negotiate for wage increases. What will happen to the marginal product of the last machine employed as they readjust? So what they're saying is, is that this value, the wage, um, the wage, is going to increase. So if that's true, right, that the the, the denominator for this one increases, um, then I know that really this number is going to be smaller, right? So like the that the MPL over the wage is now going to be smaller than the MPK divided by the rent. Um, so that that must be true as a result of this wage rising, right? Um, because it made this a smaller value. So they're going to consume more machines. 
in response to that, right? So therefore, they want more machines. And so therefore, the MP of the last machine will be less. And one, one reason why we know that to be true is because of diminishing marginal returns, right? We're going to hire the next machine. Well, the next machine is going to produce less marginal product than, um, than the last one that we just did. So we would say that the last machine will generate less marginal product. It's not that actually that machine is less productive. Um, it's just as a result of diminishing marginal returns. All right. So hopefully this helped you with basic practice related to uh, factor markets. I'll see you next time. Yeah.